is startup is an image transferencing and child advisory. In, the, in their own words, they help create gentlemen. And I would request Arthik to share his insights on how his company does that and also give us an insight on men's fashion and image consulting as a profession. Thanks, Rob. Uh, first evening. When Yuki first came down to me and said that I want to talk about men's fashion or talk something about my startup for this event for the head start, I was all excited. Let's hustle between the like minded crowds and all. And I was like, yeah, it would be fun. Then a few days later, Roshni comes down to me and says, How about you keep you work as the talk as a speaker and supporting me speech and you'll talk about men's fashion? And I was like, No, oh, sorry, I don't talk about men's fashion. I was petrified. I was like, I don't know anything about men's fashion. I didn't start it, I'm just thinking about men's fashion. I started it for a very different cause. But then I read the email second time and it said I need to talk about my startup as well. So I said, all right, I'll talk about. I am Mr. I'll talk about why I conceptualized that and how I went with that. It's been a year now that we are up and it's currently me who's handling it most of the time. We generate revenue, a lot of collaboration with uh, a lot of people on our website, blogging and a lot of other stuff. So first, before starting this, uh, let me ask the ladies here first. Uh, how many of you work in a workplace and you feel that you, either your husbands or your the people that you work with, the men, are not dressed properly or do you think that they are quite under Underestimated, you know, they are like underdressed. Under yeah. Something like they are not up to the standard, you know, when you go and walk into that, just one, two, three, four, that's all. So, Arthur, you need to ask them what do they expect at? Uh, I, I, think, I think they have they a have mindset what they expect from a person. Uh, I'll come down to that later on, but yeah, that's fine, four is fine, that's not a big thing. And how many of you may think that if, even if you wear your most expensive clothes or the newest of your clothes and you still don't feel that confident or you still fail to impress or you just don't feel the right even after spending that much of money? None. <laughs> so, yeah, let's start. I would have been happy if anyone would have raised their hand, but that's fine. I won't be in there. So if you need to <laughs> ah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, the point is, uh, even if you agree or not, but I'll still blame it on our society and our culture, which has, from a, the day we are born, we are made to think that our men is for working, to help the family, to go out and earn, whereas female on the other side are more for <coughs> taking care of the households or beautifying themselves or keeping them intact family of their family or the image, basically. And currently, when you see in the globalization, what you see is they are competing with us. And they have an upper hand. You go to a corporate, well dressed females, you go to media agencies, good females, well dressed. And they are presentable. So now they have an upper hand on this. And what we have is a stereotype image. So then, yes, a dark trouser and a light shirt is what we call form. So that's fine. And it has become quite generic now. Uh, all right. So first thing is, uh, how many of you feel that, how many of you are from HR or marketing or business development, even for your startups or general? And how many of you feel that the first impression is something that counts, so you don't just take care of that? What is it that matters to you when you meet someone for the first time? You should look professional. All right. Other than that, um, what what is what is the term professional mean? So it means uh, if you are selling something, uh, your confidence, your knowledge should carry across, both in your demeanor and in the dress sensory. The entire persona. Yes. Yeah. So you didn't raise your hand when I said uh, you have problems with the men in your English. I, I don't. <laughs> That's I don't. Fine. That's fine. Uh, I think so. I disagree on that point. Sorry? Based on the type of <coughs> assignment uh, the person is working on. For example, if a scientist uh, will even come in a sleeper. I'll, I'll come to that. I don't really agree that what you work for, but unless and until let's say you are a startup or you are into marketing or business development, there is something that you have to take care of. Yeah, for example, I'll a lot of people it. would a lot of people would keep the same that you you know you don't judge a book by its cover. <coughs> you need to know your stuff well and then go up ahead. So it doesn't matter what I wear, what I don't wear. So a lot of people come down to me and say, oh, come on, let it be. 
Steve Jobs robbed the dirt plant. And it was, uh, they say that, oh, look at Steve Jobs, he was what, he was rocking a turtle neck, he was an iPhone, nobody cared about him, but that's before that. This image is a movie called The Pirates of the Silicon Valley. This image here was when he was working in his garage, long beard, long hair, brown like shabby t-shirt and shorts. This is for his first exhibition that he had made. Uh, and when he was trying to sell or search for the investors for the first Macintosh. So, you, you see the difference. He was wearing a suit, he was in the end of his beard, and now here he had to move that. The point is that eventually, this and this. So, this was when iPhone became a brand. People were more concerned about the product rather than Steve Jobs. Okay. So, once you reach there, it doesn't matter what you wear. But yeah, you need to look presentable then as well. Uh, with that, uh, I would also like to share a story. I was in Sydney for two years, two and a half years. And I was working there. I studied and then I was working there. And I was working for a call center there. And I worked for two years, uh, two months, and I was then progressed to floor manager rather than taking the calls. And there was this one guy who was an Indian as well from Haryana. And he came down to me, dude, I don't keep food since I was one year. And I'm still taking a calls. How come you were just it's been two months and you are now on a floor manager, I think. And he said that I can solve the problems as good as you can. I'm like, maybe they look at what you get. And he was shocked. And it was quite harsh on me as well. So I said that. That was true. And that was over. The game was over there. Two years down the line, I came back here. And I started working as an urban designer. So, uh, by professional, uh, professionally, I'm an architect and an urban designer. I work for a company. And when I started working with this company in Ahmedabad, that is what it to me, that dressing up well, you know, talking nicely, behaving yourself. And all those things had the same impact that I had in Sydney. That I was more comfortable with my boss, more approachable. And yes, it eventually it built a level of confidence in me and the thing went well. And one fine day I, I thought, what was, the, what was so common about it? What was there in Sydney and what was there in India? Both are different countries, different cultures. And what was one thing that came up to me is that everybody wants, or everybody is good, good when they are around well-dressed men, well-behaved. And I said, well, we have a lot of things to it, but I'll keep it short. Uh, so I said, all right, let's think of it. And then I, as an urban designer, you deal a lot of time with demographics and populations and a lot of data. And I came up with that there are a lot of people, let's say 70% who are still employed for a working class. And not all can afford the GQ. GQ is nice, I love them, I like the stuff there. But it's quite illustrative and it gives, for me it is like a book that gives me an inspiration to cater to a lower class or lower mass. And then I said let's do something about it and I started googling stuff, what I can I do, how can I help this man or how can I do something about it. And I came across this very fine amazing person called Aaron Marino and San Francisco. He's a consultant and stylist as well, for just for men. And I started having talks with him. And he was quite supportive and he said we can, I first wanted to collaborate with him and open his own franchise here in India and I was, he was like, no, don't do that. Rather than that, start something of your own. I'm like, okay. So, I and Mr. was something that I thought of and I said, let's do it. I hired first the problems about a startup. The first IT person that I hired to design my website took 16,000 bucks and gave me nothing except commitments and he then did that. Two months later I hired someone else for 28,000, he did the same mess and I was just too annoyed because I wanted to launch it on my web, on my birthday and I couldn't do that and I was hurt. And a month later I said let's let me do it myself. And that's what startup is about, you don't just waste money, you save it and put it in the right place. And Squarespace, how many of you have heard about Squarespace? Squarespace was something that I came across and amazing stuff. Helped me from scratch to get up everything. Content. Content was all written by me as well. I didn't hire a content writer. And now I had no money to spend. And I lost lost trust in everyone actually. And I started it. And eventually it went quite slow. For at least three months. I started in August, September, October, November. It was quite slow, nothing was happening. All I was doing was updating the content and blogging about stuff I like. And 
then came a uh, and then it was a wedding season and this friend of mine comes to me and says, dude, how would I be your first client? It's my marriage. I'm marrying one of my childhood loves. Let's do it. And I don't know. I don't trust her. And I don't want her to select my clothes. I'm like, why? I said, I don't want to wear those bling bling and jazzy clothes, you know. I want to be a bit uh, normal. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I'll try what I can do. And it was quite exciting. I know this guy from the last 10 years now. And I was uh, like, okay, I'll help you out. And he had a very strict budget. He was not ready to spend. He wanted to spend on the honeymoon. So he was like, oh, I'll be all right, whatever I wear. But I want something nice. And I'm like, okay. So I ran around with the, sorry. I ran around the market and I searched for a few clothes, patterns, designs. I couldn't come. I'm, in Gujarat, you don't find too much of fashion, you know, that you can find in Mumbai. Walk around in Mumbai and you find a lot of good stuff around. See, not in the case of Gujarat. And I did move around places and I said, okay, I'll come up with something like this. This is a friend of mine. And he wanted it very casual for his Sunday night. He didn't want it bangalars because it's quite traditional. And a lot of people were wearing hats, even their friends. So he didn't want it mixed the crowd. And this was something that I came across very simple. I went down, searched clothes, fabrics, designs. And yes, so this is Sumit, one of my very good friends. And that's what we do. Uh, after that, it was right. Now again, after December, things went quite slow. And I thought, what next? And then there were a lot of friends of mine and colleagues who used to text me or WhatsApp me and send me links via emails of stuff they want to buy, stuff they are looking for. Like, hi, Ardhing, I'm planning to buy something. I'm planning to buy an Oxford. So where can I buy them? How, how much would it cost? And things like that. And I was like, OK, this is something interesting. And most of the time, most of the time, whatever I used to tell them, they were quite convinced. And I was like, okay, this is something to think about. And I Google stuff again. What do you call someone who can shop for you? Well, I didn't know what it was called back then. So they said it was personal shopper. And what does he do? I think that I know. So I said, okay, let's get one more thing to do. And it was uh, personal shopper was again into the list of my services. And it was running well, fine. Like every startup, I was using the SEO and the SMMs to come on the first page of Google. Squarespace helped me a lot, a lot of other entrepreneurs as well helped me. And still I was not getting the amount of rush that I could get, the amount of people that I should log in to look at the services. And there were a few friends who were into the startup who were like, how about you try segmenting your crowds? And I said, I already segmented it. I'm not catering the females, I'm catering the males. Yeah. So that's a huge segmentation. They asked me to reduce it further to age group and all, and I said no. I cannot do that. I want to get it to all kinds of people. When? From let's say 18 to 80, that's fine. And one fine day, uh, there's this guy from Chennai who takes me saying that, uh, give me a specific time, I want to talk to you. And I'm like, okay. So he was in Chennai and it was quite tough and expensive as well because I charged for the travel as well. So he was like, it's quite expensive. And I'm a startup company and I'm looking for this kind of services. I'm being healthy in that. So what I did was, this is something that I came across, I started with an online thing, you don't do anything much. What you do is, this is my plan, what you do is, you send me an image, a full length image and a password size image of yours. You send me a water photo, what you wear on a daily basis, and then I analyze it and give you the services. What I give him right now is that I saw this, I suggested something to him, and then now I'll be shopping for him from Ahmedabad. I'll be contacting the people in Chennai, the malls and the brands, and I'll, I'll ask them to arrange for that. That is something that I provide. This is this was one of the interesting clients, and one last Monday I got a very really amazing client, and that's, I, I'm quite happy that I didn't fragment it further into each group or any other criteria to bifurcate the men. There's this men, uh, there's this guy is CA, he's a chartered accountant from Mumbai, who is polio struck, and who is polio struck, and. He said, I want you, sir. It was, it was, again, one of a moment where I said, I cannot do this. You know, is polio, sir. Well, how, how can I, how can one style someone who is, who walks on the crutches and what would you do about it? And then he comes to me that I, the one thing that he needed was, he wanted the confidence. 
So we are not just into men's fashion. Fashion is quite a big term to use. I will not talk about fashion. I am not talking about fashion. What we talk about is men, us men, and the problems that we face on a general basis. So this guy comes up to me and says, I want your services. I am like, okay, send me a photograph. And he WhatsApp me his photographs. I won't show you that. And it was, it's like a challenge. It's like a challenge that I have not done in since last one year. And I said, okay, I accept it. And I said, you have a budget. And he says, no. But I can't spend more. I'm like, that's fine. And currently I'm working. And trust me, it is, it is one of the biggest challenges that image fans can notice that main stylist would face helping someone. I can start to say, uh, I'm still to earn money or to make a brand out of it or something like that. I wanted to help. That was my basic concept about it. And men, especially the men. Because once they include, there are a lot of chances of including the society as well. The future of our minister, what I look right now, I want to put it into an education sector and the employment sector. That's how I look about it. Now, talking everything about that, uh, the personal shopping part, how it helps me, or how it helps my clients basically is, first thing is I save their money. For example, he comes down to me and says that he has a budget of 10,000 and he wants to buy something, he gives me a list. And I look at his photograph, I look, I take his measurements and everything, and then I go out in the market and I hunt for him. So if he's in Gujarat or if he's in my reach, I'll take him along the next time and I'll save him from the previous year's things. Right? Who push you to buy something which you don't really want. It's a commission base. And the other thing is why someone who trusts me is you had some man-on-man -man talk. We men are <laughs> egocentric and shy, both at the same time. You wouldn't go to a female asking for help because you are egocentric or you wouldn't trust. And we are shy to talk to men because we think he might take me as a feminine, you know. Who talks about grooming? Men on men talks. Men on men talks more about beer than sex. So that's me. So I said, okay, uh, that's something that I can do. And I'll give you a rough idea. And I'll show you a video what exactly and how exactly I do the consultation. Just don't, if a client comes down to us and we just don't say that 
yes, we have this, we have that, we have this, we provide this and we'll help you with this. No, sorry, we don't do that. The first thing we ask is how you want to do it and why you want to do it. And what's the budget? I can't just go along and give him a budget of 50,000 and he cannot afford it. It's fine. So I don't do that. What we do is I ask him about his story. A lot of people have a relationship issue. A lot of people have an ego issue. A lot of people have the office issue or the family issue. First is that. Because that gives me a clear picture of why someone would want it and what's the purpose. So that's one-on-one -on -one talk that we do. And that helps us. And coming to the end, but then still uh, uh, a lot of people who still have that problem to understand what exactly we do in terms of personal shopping or as an image consent and how we help someone and what we do. Uh, I'll again show you a small video which will talk about, which exactly talks about what we do. And that again, that's the line working, so sorry, it's fine. So, Uh, and that's basically 
a part of services that we provide. Other than that, what I do is I tie up with startups like one with Yukti that frames that works for winter clothing. I, I tie up with companies like e-commerce website like Keystain. That's in US. It's a US based Amazon chain, and I like stuff for them. And from there, I get some stuff to be. Now, a lot of people would come down to you and tell you why you need to, as you said, that why you need to dress well. But the prime point is not about impressing someone. It's not about uh, you have to go to workplace just because you have you want to rise up that corporate ladder. No, that's not the only point. Why you would want to do that? Why you would want to wear something like that? Or be presentable? The main point we have that is. Uh, This is something that I believe. Uh, we believe that Mr. is just not a title to your name. It, it expresses beyond that. It talks about your self-respect and uh, probably the fortunes that you have busted till now to achieve to a standard, to have for the education or for whatever sacrifices that you have made on your social background as well. So it just takes some pride out of there. Press up early in the morning, go to a workplace, be confident about it, and just not be a kind of worker who just do bare minimum. Just put on a black trouser and a striped shirt or light shirt, and that's the formal for you. No, don't do that. Go beyond that. Try with colors that suit you. Try with fits that suit you. That's the prime and most important thing that I talk to every man across. That it's not always about a brand. I don't endorse any high brands like our designers for let's say Marc Jacobs or Tom Ford or anyone like that. No, I don't because that's not the crowd I'm catering. I'm catering to a generic crowd of someone like me who's an employee who works. And what I tell them is to take care about the fit and the fabric. That's the main part. Because a lot of time what we do is we go to a place, we go to a mall and we just buy stuff that's on a mannequin or just the sales and tells us and we buy that. And it's trending. Don't go beyond the trends. But don't go behind the trends. Go beyond that. Go for something that suits you, that takes you a step further, that makes you confident. And today what I would want you guys to do is, the men, go home. I'm sure everyone would have one outfit or one uh, part of an outfit that has made you feel confident, that has become a lucky charm or a lucky shirt or a lucky trouser or tie. I'm very sure everyone would be having one. I have one. And it's not about, <coughs> let's just go back home and just try it up and say, and just analyze, was it all about luck? It was more than that. And if you can, you can just share it, us, share it with us on Facebook, Twitter. Just let us know. We would love to uh, <coughs> answer that, what exactly it's about. And, uh, just do it, yeah. That's all I would want to say. That just do it. I had a blazer with me to, you know, it's my first presentation, so I have to short clip wear a blazer and it's too hot. So that's also one thing that one should take care of. You don't look, you need to look like a fool because it's too hot down here. And I cannot wear a blazer. Any kind of blazer, to be honest, in Mumbai right now. Not even, I would have been going I would have worn a linen, I would have been happy with that. So that's keeping it casual. Just go home, do that. And I would love if anyone would follow us or just send us an email that what was something about that outfit of yours and we would love to share the story. Yeah. And one final tap. This comes from one of the TED Talks that I have seen and I love those talks. Uh, how many of you are into this business because of the internet? How many of you are famous or you have business that deals with the internet and if internet wouldn't be here today, none of us would have been here today. How many of you are like that? that you wouldn't achieve anything with a bit, without internet. That's it. I have a lot of cards around. No, but now it's, okay, fine, that's fine. Nobody would need it. But now it's, it has become very necessary. You need a, you, anything without not having a Facebook page, not having a Twitter account is called unauthentic. It's not a brand. It's not legitimate. So just for the sake of it, let's, let's do this. Uh, raise your hand up and just say thanks a lot internet. That's all I would want you guys to do because that's the reason that I'm here today. And I'm very happy for that. And I just, I'm, I'm happy about it. So just, let's, let's do it. Even if you are into that or not into that, just raise your hand. Thank you internet. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Very intriguing, actually, uh, as a, a profession you undertake, and I, I would like to know what is, what is the, what's the typical number of clients that you deal with, perhaps in a month or. Uh, see, as I said, I currently also work as an urban designer, and someone <coughs> in the audience right now said that I am into nine to five, and I have to work nine to five. Uh, 
Kawa will know what startup is all about. And I start, now I put up a lot of money. If you don't have anything, if you have a lot of money, you have funding, you have experts, cool, then go ahead. But don't ruin them as well. Know your facts, know your figures, and then go and do something before quitting your 9 to 5.
It takes time, patience, and a mindset. How do you develop your mindset? Uh, man on man talk. Yeah. For example, let's say you had a up with your girlfriend, and now you yeah, have some people you're sorry for that. <laughs> I, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. I uh, I hope it doesn't sound offensive, but um, I work for international fashion brands. I heard brands. that. I heard that. I heard that. Exactly. I know no, what so, you know about. No, so so the question is like you're wearing a blue on blue. Yeah. So probably wouldn't be a little better like you style people. Yes. So when I follow the European fashion trends yes. or something, yes. it should never be a tone on tone. Yes. It should probably be a contrast yes. or probably something <coughs> to uh, yes. highlight it yes. or. Uh, Probably, you know, 99% oh, of the time, before, an individual would go on that. Before this shirt, I had a pink shirt on. Pink shirt? <coughs> I had a pink camera on my shirt. Uh, Oxford, sorry. And I said, no. There's no more wearing. Wouldn't it, it depend upon the person? Sorry, I'll, I'll just come down. Yes, exactly. It depends on the person. Now, if you were my client, I wouldn't tell you to wear this. Okay? I wouldn't wear it. You wouldn't wear it. That's fine. 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 And if you come down to me and say that because you will be sending me a photograph, you will be sending me where you work. I'm here for a speech. Right? I don't rest like this and go to work. And that's the main point. Why do you want it? You want it for your work culture or your personal behavior? Your personal change, basically. And then I can answer you. I'm very blue and blue. I had this question in my mind that someone might come up to me and say that. But I'm very blue and blue. I'll be honest on that answer. Because three years back, I have this concept of trying something wherein I want to create my own wardrobe, wherein I have a uh, gray trouser, gray shirt, and a navy blue blazer. I have a beige trouser, beige shirt, and a green top blazer. You know, I want to try that. I want to try that. I'm, I will not force you for that. That's the reason I'm wearing. I have a blazer with me, right? But I didn't want it to wear this. So this is a part of an experiment, and I just wanted to know how people perceive that. Thanks for that. Come in. I really appreciate it, but that's something of my personal choice that I'm doing. Okay, if it doesn't look good, I got an idea. Okay, yeah, you're right. And I haven't seen this anywhere, so I'm doing. It. Why don't you stylize it? Why Probably the pants need to be one. Uh, you know, as uh, Ryan Gosling mentioned, you instead of 44 wear a 42, you need to wear like a pant uh, one size uh, tighter, I guess. Yes. That's a very good observation. I think I have a question. Yes, yes. yes. Just as an observation. Because you showed us the video. Uh, because since you are getting into service industry and all, uh, you can touch upon that how do you go about pricing your product? Because if people like us would like to get into service and consulting or probably so consulting, am I right? The question yeah, is you know, you know, before going there, I want to answer that. I want to answer that. I'm going to make a call right now. Uh, I had uh, before coming here. I had I was I'm staying at my friend's place. I'm from Gujarat, and uh, she said, "Just don't wear this." You know, the pant, both everything, the whole. <laughs> and they were like, "Don't wear this. You get a lot of negative comments." All right, I said, "It's fine. If I get comments on this, except I I want to see that you have a sense. You know, man has sense that we can understand this. That this is not right. This is not wrong. Then why are we not doing it?" You could understand me, right? Because you showed us a Ryan Gosling video. Yes, but because you just focused on Ryan Gosling. We didn't focus on the services. I said don't focus on Ryan Gosling, focus on the services that he's doing. No, it's a it's a it's a pro rate of Sorry. Can we take it offline? Yeah. Thank you very much. Surprising part is